They're gonna first be really surprised about the history and the culture of this book. And that this person, uh, Mr. Robert Smalls himself, not only was he an enslaved person, but he got his freedom. And he did more than just getting his freedom. He became a state legislator. He himself was illiterate and he learned to read and write and he produced a beautiful family, and he also took care of the elderly people who were his owners in Beaufort, South Carolina. Uh, she, they lived in that house after he bought that home until they died. So it, it's, it's a great story from the perspective of, from one extreme of being enslaved to the other extreme of taking care of the very people that enslave you. If that's not love, I don't know what is. I wanted to have some form of abstraction in terms of the landscape and the people in the landscape. So I used the, I, I worked on paper and I used acrylic paint uh, to construct the imagery. Uh, the acrylic paint worked very well because it dries much faster and, uh, and the colors of quite brilliant in this, uh, in, in this acrylic paint that I've used. And I was able to have fun. I wanted to feel like I was a child again, just exploring Robert Smalls and the possibilities of, you know, having to be a part of the adventure of painting about someone and also having the freedom. As he uh, acquired his freedom, I acquired my freedom in putting the subject matters in this book more into an African fashion conscious sense. The most informative way to help children read is through visual imagery. Uh, and we can use the Bible, for example. Uh, in the day until very recently, all of the Bibles had visual images in them. And that's because 90% of the populace of people reading the Bible could not read. They were illiterate. So I wanted the viewers of this book, children, their parents, their grandparents, look at it and see the images. And from the images, then I hope that they would enjoy the reading material of the book.